And I am done with Ruin by John Gwen. This is the third book in the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwen. That was awesome. I can't remember the last time I've read a book that good. It was so good. I'm kind of floored by the ending of this book. Not going to spoil anything, but it is really good. Um, you know, I think the first two books of this series were easy five out of fives. If I could give a six out of five, that's what I give this book. I love when a book series continues to get better book after book. And that's exactly what's happened here. I think the second book was better than the first, and the third is better than the second. And if the fourth is better than the third, this is going to go down as one of the greatest fantasy series of all time for me. Um, I, I think it's really difficult for a second-to-last book in a series to be as good as the rest of the books. You have so much setup that you have to do. It's really often that it's kind of like the lull before the storm. And that just didn't happen here. This was exciting. It was awesome. Uh, it started off a little bit slow, which is not a bad thing. I like when books start off a little bit slow. Um, it builds the tension a little bit. But once like a quarter of the book went through, it was action-packed doesn't let you breathe the reader <clears throat> it's really good there's a twist uh towards the end of the book and it's one of the greatest twists i've ever read it's up there with the the twist in mistborn where everything that you've read about in the book kind of gets flipped on its head and it's a really really good job it, it doing a twist it's the way that all twists should go where they do a ton of setup and it just floors you. I literally had my jaw dropped when it hit. It, if you read this book, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. And it did it in a fair way. It didn't feel uh, like it was a gimmick. It felt really earned. And I really appreciate that by what John Gwynn's done here. Uh, I liked so much about this book. I probably won't be able to hit it all. I'm just trying to remember it now. But there's there's a few things I really want to point out. Um, I'm, I've never been a big fan of connecting myself with animals in books. You know, I think of things like um, like the the Fitz and the Fool books or any of the books by Robin Hobb in the Realm of the Elderlings. And there's a lot of like attachment to animals in those books. And even in pivotal moments, I don't find myself connecting with them like they want the reader to. It's just my personal taste. I, I connect more with uh, with humans and you know really intelligent beings but this book figures out a way to solve that problem and it's done really well i i'm cheering for the animals in this series if anything bad happens to them i'm very sad when good things happen i'm super super into it i'm all about the way the animals are portrayed in this book i love it um, also not a big fan of battle sequences i've never been a big fan i kind of skim over them when i'm reading a book I know that this is the thing that a lot of people love about books, and I could not be more engrossed in the battle sequences that have happened, not just in this book, but the other books in this series. They're so well done. I can't even pinpoint exactly what John Gwen does right here, other than just to say that he does it perfectly. You can easily track what's going on. It doesn't feel like glossed over. It doesn't feel dull. It doesn't feel like the average battle sequence. It feels intense. You're literally getting sweaty palms reading about this stuff it's vivid it matters and it's i wish more authors could take note about the way that he does this because it's extremely well done i, I love what he's done here there's a big battle that happens like the second to last battle in this book is maybe the best battle sequence i've ever read since the last book in the Malazan series uh just can't get over how good this was done you know, I, I've mentioned in the past that when I read the first book here, I, I was kind of astounded by how well giants were, were portrayed in the series. I wish more fantasy books used giants. I think they're super cool. I don't know why more people don't use them. This book ramped it up. There's giants and they're riding bears. I hate to sound like a kid, but that's just cool. I want to see more giants riding big creatures. It's awesome. It makes things feel way more intense. I'm here for it. So thank you, John Gwen, for that. Um, something else that comes to my mind reading, reading this book, and I'll try to like explain it well, but the way that the point of views are 
organized in this book is extremely well done. I find myself never caring when a POV is done and it goes to another one because I think all of the points of view are interesting. And that's, that can't be said for all books. You know, I think of one of my favorite series, A Song of Ice and Fire. And when I got to some of those Sansa chapters, I was kind of rolling my eyes. Like, I didn't want to read it. I wanted to go on to some of the other characters. But that's not the case here. And another thing that A Song of Ice and Fire does that I don't, I don't think is as good here is A Song of Ice and Fire tried so hard to leave a lot of chapters on cliffhangers. This book does a little bit of that, but you'll, you'll, you'll feel like a chapter's ending during a really pivotal moment. And the next chapter is just somebody else in that event to pick it up from a different character's viewpoint. And I think that's really well done. I like the way that's done, where a, ba a battle will be about to happen. You'll finish the chapter and you'll be like, man, I wanted to hear about that. And boom, flip to the other side of the battle. Now let's see it from their perspective. Awesome. Uh, you know, I think of the way that Wheel of Time's done, another book that I really like. And they would have these long stretches where they'd go chapter after chapter after chapter with the same point of view. And it was too long to the point where you started to forget what was happening with the other characters. And when they finally flipped to them, it might have been a while since you've read about them and you kind of lost it. That's not the case here either. They're, he does a really good job at getting a kind of smaller cast together. Um, it's not tiny. I, I feel like there's probably five or six points of view in this book, but they flip between them in a really, really great way. Uh, just can't get over how well that's been done. You know, something else I, I want to point out that I think he does a really good job at time flow where, you know, a lot of books will do one of two things. They'll try to um, make all of the events of the book happen in a very short time frame because I feel like it's hard to map things out um, so that it's done correctly. But this book does a really good job at allowing months and years to go by and it feels like months and years have gone by. Where if a, if a character has to travel from one point on the map to the other, when you read it, they'll say that a couple months have passed. You know, I think of things like a, a Song of Ice and Fire again, where all of a sudden somebody will just appear in another part of the map. And it's like, how did that happen? Uh, you don't get that sense of perspective on, on time in those books. This one does a really good job and it allows the characters to grow and it feels fair on the way that they traveled and the way that the events have gone down. Um, again, a, a Wheel of Time. They used teleportation in that book to be able to explain how to get here. It was kind of cheap in some ways felt like there was no impossibility to get from one point to the other. But this book, that's not true. Characters can't show up at certain places and they get into this drama because they're humans. They can't travel instantaneously. And, and I thought that was really nicely done. Um, you know, I, I did have a couple minor faults with it. They're not a big deal. But, you know, it kind of frustrated me a little bit that it had this, for as gritty and real and dark as this book was, it did that classic fantasy trope that I kind of get sick of where every time a main character is about to die, you know, they're laying on the ground, the enemy's standing over them, they've got an axe over their head, and it's about to end, and you just know what's going to happen. You know that there's going to be an arrow or a spear or a sword or an axe that shows up randomly through that bad guy's chest, and they get saved at the last minute. It didn't happen one or two or three or four times in this book. It happened a lot, and it kind of cheapened it a little bit and it made you not feel in the moment when that happens. Uh, just a little bit less of that, I feel like would have improved the story a little bit. And my, my bigger criticism is I almost felt like this book was a little too short. And that's kind of a crazy thing to say for a book that I feel like is like 700 pages. I read ebooks, so I don't know exactly how long it is. Um, but it, it feels like every character that you come across in this book is involved in the story in an intense way. And what I would love to see is a little bit more of that slice of life aspect where, you know, it's unrealistic to expect that the every every single person on this planet is involved in this conflict. People have their daily lives to go about. Not everybody is involved in this. So it'd be nice to read about them going to a village and seeing people in the way that they interact with each other and getting that sense of flavor for the world a little bit more. Um, that certainly wasn't the case here. Um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of books do this right. I feel like this book did it a little bit wrong. So, you know, I get why it was done. It keeps the action a little bit more going, um, keeps the pace flowing a little bit more, but slowing back a little bit and seeing those points of view, I think would have been appreciated a little bit by me, but they're pretty minor criticisms. I thought this book was amazing. I, it's been many months since I've read a book 
that is this good. And I read a lot of books a month. So hats off to John Gwen. I cannot wait to read the last book in this series. I've, I intentionally never spoil myself on, on future books, but I have heard that it's the best book in the series. And that makes me really excited because I just can't wait to read it. Super excited. If you are on the fence about reading this book, drop everything you're doing and go read this series. It's super worth it. I don't know why it took me so long to read John Gwen, and I don't know why John Gwen is not in that discussion for the top two or three best fantasy writers around right now, because I think he should be. Um, you know, the guys like Steven Erickson um, is who's my favorite, who I, I think should get a little bit more love, but he does, I mean, Malazan's a huge series, uh, a huge, huge series, but, or a guy like Brandon Sanderson, who's bigger than life right now, but John Gwynn's up there in that discussion for me. Uh, another one is Joe Abercrombie, but you know, in that four, I feel like I could take them all in a different order and I wouldn't be upset about what's number one, what's number two, and three and four. Um, he's that good. So hats off to John Gwen. This was awesome.